Well, here we are, the day after Thanksgiving, and it's snowing again. The second snow of the season already. But that's not going to stop me from sharing this episode, because I have a surprise for you. Later, you're going to see a table, a beautiful table that was set by Sharon Santoni. I had the opportunity to have lunch with her and a group of women. And if you're not familiar with Sharon, she is the author of My French Country Home, and she also has a magazine and a subscription box under the same name. I'm also going to share today how I'm starting to collect greens to put them on the outside of the house, in garlands and in our urns. And then I'm going to share how I made the sugared cranberry pops and the candied orange peel. Then I'm going to take you shopping. So if you'd like, put this on pause, grab a cup of coffee, a tea, your favorite libation. We have about 26, 27 minutes together and I can't wait to share what I've been doing. I'm Linda Davis and you're watching New England Fine Living at Sugarwood. And this is a place where I hope to inspire you to find your own version of fine living, no matter how simple or grand that may be, no matter where you live. If this is your first visit, or if you've been following along and haven't subscribed yet, I would love to ask you to do so. It really does help my channel out. Enjoy. This was videotaped on Thanksgiving Day. We had our Thanksgiving last week, so I set this time aside to start collecting some greens for around the house. And I purposely did not trim some of these trees when we moved in because I knew I was going to be using these for urns and for our garland. So right now I'm just working on getting some of the tips from this hemlock tree and then I'm going to walk around and collect some other greens from the yard. So far, I've collected some hemlock, I have some juniper here, and I have some white pine. But there's some other evergreens that I'm going to put into the mix here a little bit later, and you'll see that during the Christmas house tour. I decided to work on the side entry door with the arch here. I purchased some white hooks, and I'm going to put these hooks around the arch, starting in the sides and the center and then I'm going to go down the side and this is where I attach the greenery and I'll show you that in a minute and I'm also going to head out front and I'm going to start cleaning out the urns you may have remembered that I put in some branches for the fall and just like I was concerned about they started to freeze in the soil so I was able to get most of them out but like this one there was no way it was frozen so I had to wait until the sun hit it so I did end up going back to the side of the house and worked on that project. Starting with faux greens. Now there's many times where I've made my garland from scratch using just fresh greens or I've purchased them. But this year I'm going to take this green garland that I purchased at a store. I, it was one maybe from Christmas Tree Shop, I'm not sure. And I'm going to use this as a base for my live greenery. So what I'm showing you here is I put up the cup hooks and I attached this green garland to the cup hooks and they are very wiry and I'm able to fold in and attach my live greenery. I didn't think I was going to have twinkle lights this year outside because we didn't know we had any electrical sockets but Ben did find one on the far end of the eave of the house near the back and we finally found a switch in the house. It was one of those switches we didn't know what it went to that worked that outlet. And you can see I've got a ladder way down there. That's where the plug is. Now normally, if I didn't have a plug, there's an adapter that you can screw into a lantern where the, the bulb goes that you could also put a, a plug in. But the lantern here has glass all the way around and I couldn't leave the door open. So that option was not gonna work. And speaking of lantern, I have no idea why the lantern's that high and away from the door. 
So when we work on the remodel on this side of the house, I will be moving the lantern and I might order a second one for the other side of the door. This is just a close up to show that I have the live greens mixed in with the wired greens and I will be adding more, but the bitter cold set in and it was raining for a while while I was working out here, so I was very cold. But you'll see the finished product during the whole house tour. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have already seen this little snippet, but it was just so magical with the snow falling and the twinkle lights and I'm pleased at how it's coming out. Before the snow came and before nightfall, I was able to go and pull out the rest of the branches from the urns and I was able to add some of the greenery back in the holes from the branches, so I lucked out. Regarding the candied orange peel recipe, here is a snippet of how I did it, but I want to explain that this was actually part of a larger experiment that I'm still trying to figure out, and here's the background story. In November 2020, I enjoyed my very first cold candied orange at the Hancock Inn, and it was served over chocolate, and it was so good and tender, and there was no bitterness whatsoever. I ate the whole orange. So the next day I went home and I tried to make my own and it came out pretty darn good. Uh, I, I scored the orange, I took out the peel, I did a little research, but this time I'm going to be trying something different because I wanted to also have the ribbon-like peels for the oranges. And I'll tell you now, when I show you the steps what I did this year, 2021, versus the video that's rolling right now, which was 2020, I'm going to have to, I think, separate the two experiments, one being the candied orange, and then one being the candied peel, and you'll see why in a moment. I ended up adding the orange to my aunt's cranberry sauce recipe, and it really did come out good, but this year I did it different. This year I peeled the rind with a peeler versus cutting it with a knife. So I do know now that when I want to make my candied orange, I'll be using the knife because it is, comes out prettier. And when I want to do the candied peels, I'll use a peeler because it's a lot easier to get it off of the orange. This was a multi-step process of first blanching the oranges and the rinds in low boiling water to remove some of the bitterness. And I did this for about 25 minutes. You can do just one or two oranges. I was feeling a bit overly confident that they would come out perfect or just as pretty as I wanted, but you'll see later. They came out delicious, but not as pretty as I wanted. For the recipe like I got at the end, I'm now wondering if I should have blanched the oranges completely whole and made them in the syrup hole and then cut out the peel. But if anybody knows out there, please let me know because if I keep experimenting, Florida orange growers are really going to like me because I'm going to keep buying oranges until I figure this out. I'm just putting a small cover in here just to keep them submerged a bit. Once I blanched them, I took them out of the water and then I created a simple syrup that would cover the oranges. Now, note to self, I'm going to use a larger pot next time. I also did this with the cranberries. I needed a larger pot but I put them in the simple syrup under parchment paper and then I let them slow boil for about 45 minutes, let them cool, and then I put them in the refrigerator in a jar on the top shelf of the cranberries you're gonna see next. And then once again, here is the candy oranges. They did taste delicious, but still it didn't have the look I wanted. So I ended up chopping up the oranges, putting them in the cranberry sauce, and then I cut off some of the rinds and put them on top of the cranberry sauce. Kind of funky looking, but I, I got to use them and it was delicious. So I guess that's all that matters, right? Let's get to the candied peels. I took the peeled peels out of the simple syrup and let them dry a bit, then tossed them in sugar and let them dry for a day. 
This would work for the cut peels too. And you could do this with limes, you could do this with grapefruit, lemons, really any hard rind fruit. Super fine sugar is what I should be using here, but I didn't have any. I used regular sugar and it worked just fine. Once I finished coating them, I put them out on parchment paper, let it dry, and then I put them on the table to enjoy. My hopes is to create a video showing each recipe the proper way, but for now, this is what I had filmed, and many of you wanted to see how I made the candied oranges. I hope this helps some of those who wanted to see it, and I hope it didn't confuse you too much. Sugared Cranberry Pops and they're named cranberry pops because when you pop them into your mouth and take a bite, they pop and you'll get a sweetness and tart and it's a really delicious little treat. Two cups water and two cups sugar. Stir over low heat until it's dissolved. Bring it to a light simmer, not a boil, and then remove it from the heat. If your simple syrup gets to the boiling point, it would split the cranberries. Now I'm pouring in two cups of cranberries. I'm going to give them a slight stir. And then once it's cooled down just a bit, I'm going to put it in a container covered and put it in the refrigerator for at least eight hours. Mine were in for two days. I then removed them and I'm straining them so that the liquid drips off. Next time I will either be using a sieve or a rack with smaller holes because some of these cranberries went right through. Just like the oranges, the recipe calls for super fine sugar, but I wanted to use this white sparkly sugar and I'm glad I did. I'm simply putting them in a dish that has the sugar in it, rolling them around, and then moving them to a tray with parchment paper. They will then sit out for a day and dry and be ready to put in a little dish to enjoy. Cranberry simple syrup. Nothing more to do here other than taking the mixture that you just did your cranberries in and pouring it through a filter and refrigerating it. And it's good for a month or two. You could also do this with the orange simple syrup. I'll be putting this in a pretty bottle that's easy to pour and add it to our bar during the holiday gatherings. Or I might just pull it out when Ben and I want a little cocktail. Cranberry margaritas, anyone? Lunch with Sharon and Tony of My French Country Home, hosted at Tahilla Farms in New Hampshire. In 2018, I first purchased Sharon's book, I had no idea that three years later I would be sitting at a table having lunch with her and a few other women. It was a wonderful experience. We enjoyed a lunch and then we took a walk in the woods and then we had some coffee by a fire. Let me show you. Sharon and our hostess Jean put together this beautiful table with items from Tahilla Farm both inside and out. Sharon put together these arrangements with foliage mostly foraged from the property.
we're getting ready for a poem walk in the woods. It's hunting season, so we are wearing our orange vests. Our hostess, Jean, puts out poems that are special to each of her events. Now I'm going to let you enjoy some of this walk in silence until we go shopping together, which is going to happen in just a moment. A bit of shopping has been happening over the past few months. Here is just some of it. Let's start with September. Six clear glass frogs went home with me. And this room, it spoke to me. It was done in the colors that I really appreciate and use a lot in my home. The greens, the blacks, the whites, the creams. And I really liked this black piece of furniture that I'm passing. I'm going to let you see that better in a moment. I just couldn't figure out where I would use it in the home, knowing I'm doing a lot of remodeling and redecorating. In October, I hit a few stores, but here's one that I did walk off with a few books and some artwork. I don't think I showed you the artwork though in this video. I'll show you when we do a house tour later. I purchased 10 of these pheasant feathers and I used them in the fall garland that was over our mantle. I purchased this Audubon book along with a few other books for the Great Rooms Library.
this book I'm pulling out on trees actually has some leaves pressed inside. I don't know how old they are, but it's fun knowing that somebody used this book just the way that I probably will be too. For November, I went back to the New Hampshire Antique Co-op in Milford, New Hampshire, looking for sofas and sideboards. Now, these sofas had just come in from London. They were so comfortable, but the fabric and the color and the fringe just wouldn't be right for the great room. My whole thought was I would find something and have it reupholstered or slip covered. That plan pretty much went out the window when I found out there was a year wait to have that done. Remember, your home is wherever you make it.